Okay, what I'm trying to show you on this thing is going to take me probably a dozen takes or more to, to get this thing done. Like I was explaining earlier, and this is the, the problem with this cluster, this display will work fine at night when the ambient light sensor tells the BCM to turn the instrument, the park lights and instrument lights on. It'll come on dim and brighten, no problem at all. If you try to do it with the headlight switch saying, well, I'll just turn the, the lights on and it'll work, it won't work. Um, and you can do it, you can turn it on with the scan tool and see it all operate so you know the display itself works. The strange thing about this problem is that this circuit is designed to where there's a circuit that comes from this instrument cluster and goes to the headlight switch to the dimmer rheostat from there it feeds back to the bcm the bcm sends a pulse width modulated signal to the cluster to turn it on and keep the the um, leds brightened or dim wherever you want it to Okay, what we're looking at right there are some resistors marked 622. There are some multiple cracks in the solder joints for them. Um, I first saw it by looking through the other side of the bars that you can see in the upper frame. And I used a magnifying glass and a flashlight and I could actually see the weak solder and a couple of cracks. So I went ahead and lifted the display board up to get access to them to resolder them. And I'm about to do that right now, and I may touch up a couple other ones that are there, just for the... Ooh, that went blurry, didn't it? I may touch up a couple other ones there, just to be sure, because they're underneath this display. I'm not so sure how important it is today, but that number on the back of the display may come in handy one day if you ever have to search one out. Looks like 28303312. Fu Futaba, made in Philippines. Okay, I'm doing some testing and experimenting on this um, 2012 Traverse. Well, I think it might have finally got dark enough. Yeah, I don't know. But you can see. Yeah, you can see the. The lights brightening and dimming the buttons. Let me turn this one off. You can see the background lighting on the buttons getting brighter and dimmer, brighter and dimmer. And like I said um, earlier, we're currently in a daylight condition with the headlights turned on manually and the instrument cluster does not dim with this control. But the radio and HVAC DIC control buttons, they all brighten and dim like they're supposed to. And looking at the wiring diagrams, these are not supposed to dim because we still have one more lens to put on there. And when we put that on, it's gonna be fairly, considerably dimmer than what it is right now and you want a certain amount of brightness to be able to see it during daylight, daylight hours. So that's the reason why they have a design like that. And I'm going to go get that other cover so we can prove that theory out. Be just a minute. And like I was saying, this has a pretty heavy tint. With the camera, you can't hardly tell, but it really does change the way things look. In person, it's about like wearing a pair of sunglasses but I'm going to get that put on there and then we're going to recheck the brightness on everything and start putting it all back together. It was quite tedious taking this out but it all snaps back in place. I hope I got that recorded. If not, oh well. We'll catch it on the next one. This piece here just snaps in too. Like I said, I had to take it out to clear that little corner right there. I know this is a little hard to see and, and well after the fact. If you look between these terminal bars right here, you can see one, two, three, four resistors, and they have that 622 marking on it. And those are the resistors that you can actually look through from this side. And if you got really good eyes, you can see it. 
um, with your, your bare eye, but if not, you need to put a magnifying glass on it or blow it up with your um, camera, and you'll be able to see um, stress fractures and kind of dry looking um, solder, and that indicates that that is the actual problem. And you'll be able to look in there and see the cracks with either your, your eye or with a magnifying glass. And once you determine that, then you'll have to go around to the other side. And you'll have to unsolder these three terminals and these three terminals. I use this desoldering tool. It's kind of the cat's meow. You can use a bunch of um, lesser ones too. They all work. Or you can use soldering wick. And you'll have to go to the back side of the cluster. And you will need to remove the solder from those three terminals. And those three terminals. Once the solder is fully removed and you can wiggle the terminals inside, then it's just a matter of lifting the front edge of the, of the display up carefully and then rolling it back no more than about 90 degrees or perpendicular to the circuit board. And that will give you enough room to get in there with the solder and iron to be able to re-solder the, the resistor contact terminals. And let's see if you can see that. That's the solder and iron tool that I use. And it works quite well. And I always set my um, tip temperature. It's, I think it's believe 700 or 725 degrees to keep from burning any of the um, pads off of the circuit board. But now that I've... Um, shown where all that's at and i've tested this thing multiple times on the vehicle i am going to start putting this thing back together and the first thing i have to do is i have to set this down in the hole and that goes in there pretty easily i have to wipe this display off for probably the 15th time since i've been doing this to make sure there's no fingerprints or dirt or grease or anything on there Okay, like I said, I'm going to be um, I'm going to be putting this cluster back together, and what I'll be discussing the techniques I use to take it apart. If you look, I might have to get another screwdriver. I've got two of them here. If you look right there, there's a snap lock there, and another one there. Those are on the bottom edge. And on the top edge, there's only two. So what I did, okay, there's two, two of these snap lock clips at the top of the cluster. And three at the bottom. And what I had done was uh, I was thinking there's less resistance on the top. So I went ahead and got the top freed up first and then went back to the bottom to free it up. And it didn't seem too easy. So I'm going to experiment a little bit while I'm putting this thing back together and see if it might be easier to take it apart the other way. Okay, I've got it all snapped back in. And it went fairly well, I believe. And I'm just going to play around with it. And I'm going to try to get this going up first. I don't want to break that tab off, so I'm going to do whatever I can to avoid that. Oh, but you got these tabs plus you got these little holes and pegs that you got to worry about. And that is why I started the top before and maybe why I have to go back to that procedure. 
Um, let me try this one more time, see what it feels like. I don't see a fantastic way to do that, so I would say the way I did it was probably right. Hopefully one of you guys out there, or gals, may get into doing this and find an easier way. But like I said, what I did was I went up here, seeing how there was only two tabs to fight, no pegs up here to work with. So I got those loosened up and, and brought up. And then I came down here and worked on bringing these up a little bit of time and rocking the whole thing out. But I'm going to get back to cleaning a little bit before I stick the needles back on. And I got to be careful doing this because I don't want to get any on those, some of those things. And I definitely don't want to get any on the tape that I got there. And the tape is there to mark where to put the needles back on at. This cluster was nasty, nasty, nasty when I started. It's full of stickiness and dirt. And anybody who knows me don't like no, I don't like the stickiness and dirt. I guess it's from spending a lifetime being around it. Because anybody that's worked on cars for any length of time realize that people are nasty. But the way you put these back on is you you go against the direction of travel and put that thing on gently and then go back and line up to your mark and give it a little push. I'm not pushing these all the way down because I want to be able to take them off and at, while I'm test driving it to make sure they're set right because I, I back check everything against data and the, on the scan tool to make sure it's right. Okay, now I'm going to get to go outside and plug this thing in and see how it lights up and looks with everything turned on. Well, so far everything looks pretty good. You see what I'm what I was talking about earlier is it's still daylight outside. It's not bright, but it's still daylight. 
and I have the headlights turn fully on manually and I'm adjusting the rheostat and the dash lights don't dim or brighten and that's by design if we look over here I don't know if it's dark enough for you to be able to tell I guess we'll have to wait till later because you can't see it right now but th these lights over here on the backlighting side will be brightening and dimming you can kind of see it from this angle at least you can in person but look at that seek button light the backlighting on it that's at full brightness and that's dim uh, let's see let's maybe you can see it on the AC light kind of hard to see but it is actually brightening and dimming this is still on full bright as is the radio display the, when, when I'm talking about the lights on the radio will dim and brighten I'm talking about the lights for the buttons and not the display up here the display won't brighten and dim until it gets dark I'm gonna put this rag back over or towel back over that and in a minute or so we're gonna see that dim down Yep, just dimmed, and I had it turned down a little bit, so that's turning it all the way down, and that's turning it all the way back up bright, and that's as bright as it goes for nighttime vision. And this is without the lens on it. There's another lens that goes on top of it that will actually darken it up a little bit more, too. And what I'm doing right now is I'm getting, I've got my scan tool out and I'm going to go in there and do some sweep tests and look at gauge positions that according to the data that's being sent to it and see if they're in line with where it should be. But what I'll wind up doing before I put that lens cover back on it, I'm going to leave my tape in place and I'll go test drive this thing and make sure the gauges in particular um, the speedometer is accurate to within half a mile of the of the data stream because we don't want nobody getting no tickets because I did something wrong And I was looking at these different clusters. This obviously is a is a Chevy Traverse, but I was looking at the the Buick Enclave and the GMC Acadia, and I noticed that there are subtle differences. Like the needle color will be different between the the three. This, this is a red one, um, I believe. I can't can't remember which one it is, but one of them's got white needles. The other one's got orange needles. And also I noticed that the fasten seat belt light right here is is there on the enclave I mean uh, is there on this traverse but on the enclaves and the Acadias it's over here so there are, are some differences in them but I believe the same basic problem up here is going to exist no matter whether you have a traverse an Arcadia or an enclave and from what I was able to research, I think this problem is going to run from somewhere around 2007 all, all the way up to 2016. Um, for sure on this vehicle, from 2009 through 2013, it's all the same part number cluster, so I feel confident that this, re this repair would apply to all of those. Um, like I said on the other ones they look very similar. There's no reason to think they don't, didn't have the same screw up and Hopefully this will help somebody else with that, too And let's see Like I said you can brighten and dim this now that I've got 
the cover over the the day the, the daylight or the ambient light sensor and I'm going to take it off and let some light back on it and we should be able to see it pop up full bright here in just a minute or two and that flickering that you see is only on the on the camera it's it's not there in real life it's just a matching of the frame rates versus the the pulse that's in there yep see it just came on i wish it was dark enough that you could really see these lights over here bright and dim because like i said it's a full brightness on the main panel you can see a little bit of that on the recirculation button the rear button you see that and depending if you get the right angle dangle on things they are brightening and dimming but like I wrote in the article and I think I mentioned earlier one of the tricks to diagnosing this is if the driver information center is blank I want to check one thing if the driver information center is blank and these are all the rings around the gauges are all bright and they won't dim down don't automatically think it's the headlight switch dimmer come over here and look at these lights turn the headlights on manually to, to being on and then check to see if the lights over here on the button, the back lighting for the buttons light up brighten and dim. If they do, there's nothing wrong with the rheostat. And what I'm doing right now is I just put my cover back over the ambient light sensor. And as soon as this thing turns down, I want to make sure the, the clock on the radio will actually dim and brighten with the rheostat. Well, it just went out when the lights turn, so I assume it does. We're going to brighten it back up, and there she comes. It is pretty dim for the, the surrounding light that's out here, but at full darkness outside and it'll be just right inside the cabin and like I said everything's going good I had to wait until the outside lighting actually got dim enough that you could see the change in the brightness of these lights and that's full brightness and that's full dim full brightness I mean full dim and full brightness And you won't be able to see it as much, but it also applies to things like the door lock and window switches. Um, the, I think the, the lights in the mirror, no, they, they stay the same. All the lights down there, the lights on the shifter. backlighting on the switches on the let's see if you can see that dim and bright but anyways all those lights will work when the instrument cluster doesn't and well I should say that when all those lights are working you got the man, the headlights turned on manually it's daytime outside those lights will all dim dim and brighten and at night they'll dim and brighten and you can check that and but you won't see these things dim and brighten they'll just be on the the outside rings the the hash marks and the lights behind the needles and everything those will be on at full bright the dic will be in op when those resistors have loose connections and that's pretty much the main cause. I hope this all makes sense, and if not, I'll be doing posting some other things and figuring better ways to state it.